The hole smoothed. The cracks filled. John Noon draws closer to realizing his dream. I really am hoping to go to Brest, France in 2020 for a big classic wooden boat festival. He plans to hop aboard this 35-footer he's building from scratch in his barn in Kensington. This boat is really um, bulletproof. It's, it's a, I mean, it doesn't mean you can't sink it. You can the Titanic sink, but it's, um, it's just, by today's standard, it's actually probably overbuilt. John's been building wooden boats since he was a kid. He estimates this is number 25. He got a head start on this one, buying a finished hull. The price just too good to resist. So the hull is Port Orford Cedar, and that is old growth Port Orford Cedar. This is something that's really hard to find, no knots in it. Wooden boats, rare these days. Most are made of fiberglass. It is a huge commitment. I mean, uh, by the time you're done building a boat like this, you can have five, six, seven thousand hours into it. And what's the point of the cotton? Is that to absorb? Well, the cotton, when the boat swells up, it, it'll, um, it just fills any cracks that might be in there, any tiny little cracks. With time, John's priorities have changed. I'm not going to turn this boat into, into a trophy. Um, it will be a good boat. The sound will be beautiful. I started out with the fanciest boat you could get. Every boat since then has been simpler and simpler and simpler. All these gadgets take away from your sailing. This boat doesn't even have a steering wheel. That's called a tiller. It's attached to the rudder. Instead of having a wheel like many boats do, this is the most simple way. And, um, you know, I, I prefer it. Less problematic. Many parts came off an old vessel John bought at auction. He's got an eye for deals and steals. Nobody wanted to go on it because of a business and all kinds of junk and covered with tree sap. And I went aboard and had a brand new diesel engine in it, which is in this boat. All of the rigging is going into this boat. He won't set any record sailing to France. The 35-footer designed to be seaworthy, not speedy. Just the way John and his wife Linda roll. The couple took off on another wooden boat he built, the Guardian, planning to sail two years. The trip lasted 10. I've probably spent over a third of my life on a, you know, in a bunk somewhere. And it's just something about sleeping on a boat, you know, even when it's cold, it's just magic. It really was um, a dream come true. 20 countries, from the Bahamas and Bermuda to the Caribbean, Europe to Africa, Norway and Sweden, Scotland and Ireland. Even their cat, Willie, had a passport. It was very regulated on getting a cat into the UK, so we had to get a passport. Almost for naught, the cat fell overboard on their way to Bermuda. We started looking for him on deck and down below, nowhere to be found. They were in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the night. This is uh, about 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, flat calm, not a breath of air, um, low scud, so absolutely no ambient light whatsoever. You know when you're in the woods and you, that's you how can't even see was. your hand in front of your face. The darkness ultimately saved the cat. After turning the boat around and scouring the water for miles, they thought they heard him, and then they spotted him. We could see his eyes, and, it was a, and that's what saved him. I leaned over the side and of the big hands, I grabbed him right by the head and threw him into her arms and she fell on her knees, thanking the Lord. And the rest of the trip, far less dramatic. John picked up boat repair jobs in various ports to pay the bills. All you have to do is rattle your toolbox and you'll have work. The locals embracing John and Linda as their own. When you're in a country or a new port for six or seven months, you become part of the community. We, you know, the, the people at the hardware store, the spinach, bigger John, a bigger John, a bigger John, you know, coming in and, or, uh, you know, little Linda, little Linda. The world's full of great people if you open yourself up. And we just have, you couldn't have had any better, better time. Things got rocky at times, living in close quarters. We had what we called fast fighting, so we would have it out really fast and just get you're over it. You're a blankety blank blank blank, blank and, and you are a blankety blank blank. And you're a bigger one. And, then and you it's just, like, you're, then big, you're twice as bad and we're screaming, and then it's like, okay, okay, we're over it. Let's go get an ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> 
finding just as much success weathering meteorological storms. If we had a situation where we were going and the weather yeah. was bad, we waited it out. And we never got into a gale yeah. in 10 years. I mean, we, we were close a few times. We were close, but we prided ourselves on never having been in a gale. Adjusting to life on land back in New Hampshire proved difficult. We were very, very close. We were close all the time, and when we moved back to the States, that was one of the things that was the hardest, is not being with each other and near each other. All the time. They sold the Guardian to make way for John's new boat and new adventure, reliving a dream.